Well, I am uh, overwhelmed by uh, you know, the move of the Holy Spirit in our congregation. When uh, Pastor Alela mentioned about, uh, well, I'm not shy to so share with you, brethren. When we were actually using the facility that's uh, uh, Lucretia at the Father's house, uh, I serve as a janitor. And I, I am not shy to share that with you. I will wake up every day at 4 o'clock in the morning so that we, we won't pay rent. I volunteered to Dr. Green and I said, uh, now can I serve as a janitor of your school and your church so you won't charge me uh, rent for our church? And he said, yeah, go with it. And those were actually uh, you know, a joyful occasion in my life where you know, I uh, wake up at 4 o'clock and I will ride my bike and in the middle of riding the bike, I, I didn't realize it's very cold. So I have to, you know, bike fast so I can sweat. But those were only foundations and I want to let you know that the Lord has allowed so the kingdom of God will grow. And I know there will be challenges that the Lord will, give you, will put in front of, your, of, of you. And I want you to accept those challenges because those are stepping stones where you will grow but at the same time you will see that what you are doing for the Lord will prosper. So when you are challenged with a stepping stone in your life, take it and grab it and rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because you will soon go back and reminisce the past and you will always say, Lord, I praise you, I glorify you for what you have done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I mean, happy anniversary to all of you. Amen. And we are looking to uh, a bigger ministry. And uh, I am excited for the year 2015. I am excited. Well, we are back. And I want to say thank you for allowing us to take a vacation. According to what I have actually read, you know what? When you take a vacation, you have to relent in your life. So you are allow, you allowed me to lengthen, you allowed us to lengthen our life, and if you want to lengthen your life, take a vacation. Amen. I encourage you to take a vacation. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. We'll be looking at some passages in the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to 20, and we will uh, read Deuteronomy 21. And I want you to, uh, I don't want you to be surprised because... I, I, when we were on vacation, actually I asked the Lord, uh, Lord, what do you want me to preach when I return back? Uh, Pastora asked me one time and she said, are you excited to go back and preach? And I said, yeah, I'm excited because I knew I have a message coming from the Lord. And I want to give you the background of this uh, message that I am sharing with you today. And I'm excited to share this to you. Uh, because the title of my message, are you ready? The title of my message today is Return Your Body to God. Say it with me, Return Your Body to God. And I want to share this uh, thing, brethren, the background of this, why God has impressed this message to me, because uh, I think that was uh, before May, when, our, when some of you actually have promoted the greatest loser. I do not know, I heard that it was Brother Henry and Sister Aleli who actually introduced that, the greatest loser, and uh, Doc Jerry and Nori actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, tightened the grip on, uh, on the greatest loser. Do you remember that? And most of you have joined that. Yeah. And actually that is where I am uh, sharing to you how this message came to pass. Uh, once in a while I go and pick up Julian from school and I always engage conversation with Julian. And he will always make me, give me a trick. While I'm, I will drive him home, he will be uh, you know, sharing his experience at school and, uh, and he knew that uh, we will pass by uh, in and out. <laughs> you already know, you know, the kids, when they want to eat, they will, uh, you know, pursue and, you know, try to press you down so you will give in. And while we are conversing, I said, okay, are you hungry? And he said, yes, Dad, uh, yes, Papa, do I am hungry. And in the process of our conversation, that was the second time I heard 
you know this and because he whispered to me and said, Papa Du, have you heard about the, you know, the, uh, when you order, where is Brother Sam? Because he was the first one who introduced me the, uh, you know, the big fries with uh, animal fries. the animal style. And he went, Julian whispered to me and he said, Papa Du, have you heard of the animal style? Of course, I knew that because I heard it two years ago. And he said, could you order that for me? And if you want, both of us will order. <laughs> and I was shocked, you know, to hear from him, you know, encouraging me to order animal style. And I challenged him and I said, well, do you want me to order that? And, and, and he said, yes, Papa Du. And it so happened that I asked him the question, do you want me to gain weight? <laughs> and he stopped for a while and he said, no, I don't want to gain weight. And I said, are we still going to order that, the animal style? And since I asked him the question, do you still want me to gain weight? He said, no. No, so we just went ahead and ordered the regular, regular meal, the regular meal. <laughs> and I want you to understand this, brethren, because I believe I have shared to you about tithings. Remember, we do not give our tithes, we return our tithes to God. And since we knew from the scripture, Leviticus, we understand that tithes doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. It belongs to God. And this is where, you know, this message was materialized in my spirit because when I learned that tithes belongs to God, it doesn't belong to me, I came to realize that moment when Julian challenged me to order that animal style, it came to my mind, I said, Lord, now I understand that because I am bought with a price. My body belongs to you. And that is where I actually develop this when the Spirit of God, you know, has spoken to me. If the tithe belongs to God and I have to return it back to God. And that is the history on how I develop this message. And I want to share to you with no condemnation. And I'm not going to be mean, brethren, because I believe that we are in a long haul, especially in serving the Lord. We want to serve the Lord with long life. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. That's why my message today is this, return your body to God. Return your body to God. If we are giving our tithes and offerings to God, and that is His, we're going to return our body to God because our body belongs to the Lord. So when I was actually uh, uh, reminiscing of what uh, happened on that uh, greatest loser, I was actually challenged because I, I was heading towards this, you know, destruction and uh, destroying my body. Because every time I ask Pastora, you know, and I will say, would you cook this for me? And she was so obedient that I don't know it. She just loved me. And every time I ask her, could you cook, uh, you know, uh, adobo with that fat? It's shaking. <laughs> and, and I don't know why she doesn't say no. Once in a while she say no. But not all the time, maybe she loves me so much, that's why until I was awakened with this greatest loser. I was actually the last one, I talked with Sister Nora and said, I want to come in and I want to join, I want to join. And that is where I became serious about my health. Because I know that if I want to serve the Lord, I want a balanced life. If I am growing in the spirit, I also need to take care of my physical body. Amen. And I want to share to you, brethren, that once you decide to give your body and return your body to God, this will be the greatest and extravagant gift you can give to God. Amen. I want to tell you, brethren, 
If you will return back yourself, your body to God, I tell you, this will be the greatest and extravagant gift that you can give to God. And I, I, I appreciate the dance that our sister have shared this because I was looking at that uh, alabaster box where the woman gave the best to the Lord. And I can tell you today, if you will accept my challenge today, if you will return your body to God, you are going to, you are actually giving an extravagant gift to God. All right. Number one that I want us to see, and I always give you three points man, so that you will be able to understand. Number one, our body belongs to God. Amen. Amen. And I can share with you a passage. So I want you to open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to 20. And I am reading in the NIV. And of course, there is here the New King James Version. You can read the King James Version. I want to read the New International Version. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. What Paul actually is saying here, I can do anything I want to do, but I am not under the power of any. Verse 13, you say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By His power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and He will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ Himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. In verse 18 it says, Verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually, sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Now I want the first thing that I want to place in your spirit right now is that you do not belong to yourself. When you were saved actually, you became the Lord's. You are God's own property in the spirit. You belong to the Lord. And that's why in the scripture, it is the Holy Spirit, according to the scripture, the Holy Spirit now resides in you. And because you were bought with a price, you belong to the Lord. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to the Lord. So what Paul actually is saying in these passages that we read, when we say that we belong to God, it is our responsibility now to actually, every day of our life, give our body to the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit who is actually residing in you, and it is the Holy Spirit actually who is every day cleaning you and reminding you of the Word of God. Now, this is in correlation with our tithes, as I have mentioned to you. The Lord actually claim our tithes. It is it is actually the Lord's. So if tithes belongs to the Lord, it is the same thing it is in correlation with tithings. Our physical body belongs to the Lord. And that's why I emphasize and I will emphasize it over and over again. If you want the Lord to be happy about you and to be happy of you, you have to give your body to the Lord. Return it back to the Lord because when you return it back to the Lord, you know, you are giving an extravagant gift to the Lord. 
one of the things that I want you to understand when we speak of our body belonging to God is that isn't it when you lend somebody you expect that uh, you know a probably a tool or when you lend somebody your car you expect that somebody to take care of that car or the tool when they borrow it yeah. you know our physical body actually was given by the Lord to us so that we can take care of our physical body and the reason why I'm sharing this is because I know we are growing spiritually I want us also to understand that we need to grow in the physical now I, I want to open to you I'm already 60 years old I turned 60 years old last January it's sad to say January next January I'll be 61 I want to live at least 85 years or 90 years I still have probably 25 and 85 years I probably 20 to 30 years and I have determined when I was when we are taking our vacation I said to the Lord Lord the remaining years you are going to give me I'm gonna use that for the glory for your glory I was thinking of Nana Itena. Nana Itena is already 80, how old are you Nana? Almost 8 years old or 8 years old. And every time I take a look at Nana Itena, I said, I'm going to live probably 85 years old. If not, Lord, give me 8, 90 years old. And I want for 100. <laughs> we will pray. And I said, Lord, if you will give me these years in my life, I'm going to use it for your glory. I'm going to use it to preach the word of God. I'm going to use it, Lord, to teach people to know you more in their relationship with you. And that is the reason why the Lord impressed in my spirit that you are growing in the spiritual. You have to also understand that you have to protect and you have to actually take good care of your physical body. And that is why I know I gained five pounds, Roland. Five pounds. Anyway, I am determined to shed that. I will go back to uh, the gym again. And you know what? We've been a members of the gym for almost five years. Brother. We've been paying every month. Every month we pay every month to pay this gym. And only after for five years, only after we announced, you know, the greatest loser, we started to go to the gym. Because I don't care. I thought you only pay the gym and you lose weight. <laughs> You know, we have bought exercises at the house. I tell you, you know, we have this uh, you know, exerciser. And me and, you know, what Pastor Rosan and I do to that exerciser? We do not use it. We hang our towels on that. And we thought when you hang that towel in there, you will lose weight. You will lose weight. And this is when I determine in my, in my spirit, Lord, I want to give my body as an extravagant gift to you. And that's why I will take good care of my physical body. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He has loaned you the physical body and it is our responsibility to take care of the physical body so that we can live long. And I am sharing this to you, brother, not to condemn you. If you are heavy weight today, say praise the Lord. If you are pity, praise the Lord. You know, what I am trying to challenge you today is that you have to protect and you have to take care of this body because once you return this body to God, you are giving an extraordinary gift to God. And maybe you are asking behind your mind right now, how in the world, Pastor, you are sharing this message before Christmas? <laughs> Why before Christmas? <laughs> so the end of my message, I will be challenging each one of us, brethren, and I will be sharing with you my conclusion. Not this December, but I will challenge you. 
See, our body is the Lord. And this is what I want you to say. Return your body to God. Because our body, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, belong to God. Your body belong to God. Number two, and I don't want you to be surprised on number two. Number two is a gluttony is a sin. I've been hearing this for many years, but I keep I kept on eating and eating and eating. I think when I came to the U.S., I was 129 pounds. Okay? That was not here. When I came, now, I think I am 165. When we left the Philippines to go to the Philippines, I was actually 159. Uh, hallelujah. And I was eating and eating because I thought when I came to the U.S., I had to eat because there is so much food in the U.S. <laughs> but you know what? Can I share this to you? Gluttony is a sin. The word gluttony is derived from the Latin word glutir, which is to golf. You know, uh, that is so, you know, you eat as much as you want. That is gluttony. Now, during, I think it is during the 12th century when St. Gregory had given the church, he was the bishop uh, at that time, you know, when he actually had written five things to avoid gluttony. And it was during the 12th century, and he had actually written the church all over, you know, the, his jurisdiction in order to avoid gluttony. And this is how he actually expressed and how to avoid gluttony. And can I share this to you on how to avoid gluttony? Number one, brother, I don't know if you have here. Did you write that, brother? No. Number one that I want to share to you that St. Gregory described as gluttony is number one, eating before the time of meal. And he even gave scriptural passages. So, eating before the time of meals, St. Gregory said, this is actually considered gluttony. And he even mentioned 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 29, Jonathan said, my father has made trouble for the country. See how my eyes brighten when I taste a little. You know, you know what happened to this one, brethren? Because they just fought the war, and King Saul actually uh, made known to all his military and soldier because they, they were so famous and they were so hungry and they said I and he said I do not want you to eat in between I want you to wait until we eat dinner but Jonathan actually ate in between and Saul was so angry and he said, I want anybody, if you're going to eat in between, everybody who eat in between will be killed. <laughs> That's what he said. In the script, if you will read that, don't say it. And because of the intercession of the leadership of the kingdom, the life of Jonathan was spared. And St. Gregory actually is saying that, you know what, when you eat in between, is considered gluttony. <laughs> number two, actually, number two, he said, seeking delicacies and better quality of food to gratify the sense of taste. Saint, Saint Gregory considered that gluttony, seeking delicacies and better quality of food to gratify the sense of taste. Numbers chapter 11, verse 4 to 5, the rubble with them began to crave other food and again the Israelites he started to he started wailing and said if only we had meat to eat we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost also the cucumbers melons legs onions peanut butter <laughs> <laughs> so seeking delicacies according to Saint Greg
Gregory is considered gluttony and better quality of food to gratify to gratify the sense of things. Number three is seeking after sauces and seasonings for the enjoyment of the palate. First Samuel 4, 11, the ark of God was captured and Eli's two sons, Hobni and Phineas died. And don't you know who the priest then at that time? Eli. Eli was the high priest. And you know how he died? According to the scripture, in verse uh, 18, when he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell back, uh, fell backward off his chair by the side of the gate. You know how, why he did not have any control of his physical body? Because according to the scripture, Eli fell backward off his chair by the side of the gate. His neck was broken and he died, for he was an old man and he was obese. Yes. Eli was heavy and was obese. Now, I like what I'm saying is to you, brethren, I am not condemning whoever you are. But I want to emphasize here is I want us to live a long life. Amen. I do not want you to die at the age of 46. Hello? I do not want you to die at the age of 40. I want you to die at the age of 90. Amen. And the only way you can lengthen your life or we can lengthen our life is to take a vacation. Hello? If you haven't taken your vacation yet, better take your vacation. Right. Plan a vacation and at the same time <laughs> take good care of your physical body. Amen. And this entails, brethren, if you want to take care of your physical body, we will begin to eat right and exercise more. Say with me, eat right, eat right, and exercise more. <laughs> and this is what will entail the child so that, uh, because, right, like what I said, the Lord's, uh, this body belongs to the Lord. And at the same time, we will see in the scripture, brethren, that somebody, well, in the scripture, this body, must be given back to God because you see if I'm not going to take care of my body I am accountable to you I am accountable to you as the church and I am accountable to my family and the other side the next one that St. Gregory described is exceeding the necessary amount of food and I, I am, I am guilty of that, brethren. I am guilty of that. Because many times, you know, when the Sana will say, that's it, I want some more. Give me some more. But I am learning, learning now to control. Because I know I'm responsible to you, I'm responsible to the Sana and to my family. So exceeding in Ezekiel chapter 16, 49. Now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. Gregory mentioned this. Overfed and unconcerned, they did not help the poor and needy. Number five, taking food too much with eagerness. Even when eating the proper amount, and even if the food is not luxurious. Genesis chapter 25, verse 30, he said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. Mm. So he is actually in a hurry. Quick, quick, I want to eat now. I want to 
eat now. And St. Gregory said taking food with too much eagerness, even when eating proper amount, and even if the food is not luxurious. Quick, let me, some, let me have some of the red stew. I am famished. And that is why he was called Edom. And you will see that in the scripture, brethren, in Hebrews 12, 16, and 17, therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy without holiness. No one sees the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, that no bitter root grows up, cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually moral or godless like Esau, for a single male sold his inheritance, rights as the oldest son. And we see here a good example on how God is challenging us. The year 2015, brethren, we're going to return our body to the Lord. Can I hear you? Amen to that? Amen. Now there is a mention in the, in the, in the Bible, brethren, of the seven, seven great scenes. Do you know the seven great scenes that is mentioned in the scripture? There are seven great scenes that is mentioned in the scripture. Number one is pride. Number two is greed. Number three is envy. Number four, wrath. Number five, lust. And number seven, and number six actually is gluttony. Number six is gluttony. And number seven is, is lustfulness. Now I want you to understand that when I mention about gluttony, it is not an it is not a weight issue. Understand this, brethren. Gluttony is not a weight issue. Now it doesn't mean that I am heavyweight, that I am, you know, I have the spirit of gluttony. No, it is not a weight issue. Gluttony actually is a thought issue. I want you to receive that it is a thought issue and that's why St. Gregory is so strong about all of this when it comes to gluttony. Now these are the seven deadly sins or great sins but you know what? In return to counter attack these greatest sins there are seven holy virtues <coughs> that we have to continue to embrace. Number one is humility. And that is, in, that is contrary to pride. This is humility. Number two is uh, generosity. Number uh, three is uh, kindness. Number four, patience. Five, purity. And number six is temperance. This is actually a counterattack to gluttony. And this is temperance. And number seven is diligence. Is diligence. Number three, that I want to place before you, brethren, when we return our physical body to God, is that we have to determine to give our body to God. Starting today, that's why husband and wife and friends, would you encourage each one and tell to everybody, to your family, let's return our body Can I hear amen? amen? We will determine to give our body to God because this body doesn't belong to us. And I want to clear this. These days ahead of us, we're going to return our body to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Amen. Amen. I urge you, brothers and sisters, that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your Holy Spirit, soul, and body, if you will analyze what Paul is saying to the Thessalonians, he is not only encouraging them to give their spirit and their soul to God, he is actually encouraging them to give their body, be kept blameless 
at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why in the scripture we were encouraged that when we actually sanctify and give our body to God, we do not give our body to sexual immorality. We do not give our body to sin. We actually allow it to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit so that when the Lord Jesus Christ will come, we will preserve the sanctity, I mean the, you know, the holiness, when I said the separate life before the coming of the Lord. That's why he encouraged each one of us, you know, that we are to sanctify our spirit, soul, and body and be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 7, 14, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Amen. Now, what Paul is actually saying here is that your body belongs to your family also. Hello? Amen. My body belongs to Rosanna. Her body belongs to me. Our body belongs to our family. And if my body doesn't belong to me and it belongs to Rosanna, I have a responsibility of taking good care of my body. And that's why I'm going to start eating right and exercising more. Your body belongs to God. Your body belongs to your husband and to your wife. Your body belongs to your family. And that's why, Mr. Richard, you have to take care of the body for Miss Charlotte. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 9, 24, 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games does into, goes in the strict training. They do it to get the crown that will not last. But we do it to get crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No. I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Now the word, I beat my body, in some translation actually, is this is when Christians sometimes they uh, mistook the word. In some translation, they use the word I buffet, I buffet, I buffet. They use the word buffet actually, in the word I beat my body. If you will see the other translation, I was looking at the, the word buffet. And some people, they mispronounce it instead of buffet, buffet. <laughs> and that's why it's good to eat in the buffet. <laughs> I buffet. That's why I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I preach, I have preached to others. Now, he is actually saying here, I have to have temperance in everything that I do. Because if I do not have temperance, I am making myself a slave to myself. And when I preach to others, I won't have the authority to preach because I am not setting myself an example. It is our choice to fulfill the mission the Lord gave us. And as, us, as a congregation, and as the Lord and the presence in my spirit, brethren, we are going to live a life of life under the coming of the Lord. So the challenge that I want to share with you today Next year, brethren, now you can uh, you can go ahead and enjoy the food this Christmas. Again, you have to be careful. Still be careful. 
starting January, brethren, shall we commit ourselves one year to uh, the first 11 40 months days. Can I hear amen? amen. amen. The first 40 days of January, we will commit ourselves, number one, to eating right and exercise more. Amen. The first 40 days of January. Because we will be fasting 21 days. Well, you are fasting, you can choose, you know, uh, which uh, fasting you will embrace. Maybe you will uh, fast Daniel's fast, which is Daniel's fast, is only fruit and vegetables. Anytime. Daniel's fast. But I want us to give the first 40 days in January until February, February 9. And that we will eat right and exercise more. I did not hear any in. <laughs> Amen. Maybe you are saying to me, Pastor, please, I can double my tights, but not, you know, miss me. <laughs> but no, we are serious here, veteran, because I believe that it's time for us to give our body to God for His glory. So would you join me, join me and we will commit ourselves the first part of January until February that we will eat right. Now who, who are good in, uh, uh, who are dietitians here, nutritionists? Sister Manu, are you nutritionist? No. <laughs> well, I want you to learn that, brethren, Eat the right food for the days. Can we be excited? Can I hear amen to that? Amen. Because we are committing as a congregation to giving back our body for His glory and for His kingdom. Amen. amen. And we will encourage one another that we will be healthy for the glory of Jesus. That is to accomplish God's purpose in our life. Like what I said, I, I am not here to condemn you, but I am here to show you what the scripture is teaching us when it comes to our physical body, it belongs to the Lord. 